Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to the next episode of my FIFA 15 career mode for DC United, episode 14, and the second episode of these pl uh, playoff season or this season's playoffs. And my opponent is Toronto FC, who won the Supporters Shield this season, which means they also took the top of the East, which means this will be a very tough game for me to play, as I believe this will be a close match. I mean, Toronto has quality players. Um, that's uh, the the attack power there between Josie Altidore, Ju Jovinko, and Michael Bradley is just uh, I'm, I'm, the only thing I can compare it to is Seattle right now with uh, Alba Femi Martins and Clint Dempsey. Uh, if you guys think, because I think they're the dangerous attack there, uh, and by them I mean Alba Femi Martins and Clint Dempsey, they're the best duo. I think that. Uh, MLS has at the moment but if you guys disagree let me know what duo you think is the best in MLS this season I'll just leave it in the comment section down below guys and here we go with Toronto they have Giovinco they have Bradley however I don't see Altador huh very interesting I might be able to sneak a win here then when there's the captain the general Michael Bradley and there's Fabio Spindola Raring to go. And here you go. Since I am the lower seed, we'll be playing the first game in RFK Stadium, or what the stadium is called here, Dromo. And Luis with a shot, and it's just wide. He just couldn't curl. He couldn't curl it in. And I'm pretty sure there's a, that's what she said. Joke there somewhere. Or he said. Whatever. It's It's a joke, guys. Anyways, and the ball is back on the net, on the field, and Lee Silva opens up for Nick DeLeon. Nick DeLeon centers the ball. Can Espinola get it? No. And then Halsey gets it. Will he shoot or will he pass the ball? No, he ends up shooting and shoots again, but it's far wide. So far, I've managed to get two good shots. or well, not good shots, but i managed to get two shots in while Toronto uh, have been uh, contained for the moment, but I'm sure they'll be able to get their chances here very soon. With Warren Craval here, manages to sneak by, sneaks through again. Craval sneaks in a third time, passes it to the ball to Giovinco. Giovinco misses slightly. What a close opportunity for Toronto there. Warren Craval with some nice fancy work there. He managed to go by three of my players relatively easy and anyways here we go with Franklin or should I say Pawnee's in the first half is about to end Spindola passes to Johnson Johnson finds Dink De Leon open but he manages it but Toronto manages manages to get the ball back and I believe that's the end of the first half 0-0 zero, zero so far I managed to get two good opportunities there while Toronto managed to get one although I think in terms of which team came closest to getting the goal I would say Toronto did And here I'm making the same changes I typically do, guys. You know, Chris Pontius for Chris Rolf. A uh, Halsty, uh, excuse me, Kitchen for Halsty. And I believe a forward. Oh, uh, yeah, Strata for Spindola. And what a nice pass here to Eddie Johnson. Will he be able to get something out of this? And I think that's a foul. I want to say it's a foul, and it's a free kick. And obviously, I'm going to center it, guys. I'm going to. Provide a sir, uh, uh, put it in. Oh God! And a nice opportunity there, but no, a nice quick emergency save there by the uh, the Toronto FC defender. I'm putting ball ball back here with Rolf. Rolf finds Eddie Johnson open. Eddie Johnson tries to turn, and unfortunately, he turned a little bit too much there and didn't get the ball on frame. Looks like Alter is coming in using the big guns. I'm surprised he didn't start though. Maybe he, he's been injured in the game, or he's coming back from international play. Although Bradley would be in the same boat, so I don't think it's that. And Morgan, with a nice shot there. Uh, did Hamid tip it over? No, he didn't. Had that been slightly lower, it would have gone in, and they would have been 
up 1-0 and it would be a bad position for me to be in. And here we go. It seems to be all TFC this, this second half. And I nice center to Lovitz. Lovitz could not get the ball on point and it is a goal kick for me. Like I've been saying, this whole second half has been all Toronto FC. Which isn't good. I need to take possession of this game and, and kind of back them away from my goal. And a nice part. Rolf, in the last few minutes of the game, could this be the winner? He shoots. And he missed. As to how, I'm not sure. And by he, I mean me. So I technically do know why. It's the boots, guys. I should probably change his boots. And he's Toronto with the possible last attack here. And they seal the ball away. Jackson. Jackson passes it to Altigo. Altigo manages to get it back. And nice chip there. But nothing Bill Hamid can't save. And that's it for this first leg. It's a 0 0 draw, which, while obviously I'm not ecstatic for because you want to win in your home games. But I think more importantly, you don't want to concede, and that's what I did. So I'll take that, and hopefully I'll be able to get at least one goal in BMO field to clinch it to the next round. And this is what I was explaining to you guys, how you kind of have to be a little smart with your, uh, your starting lineup, because there's only a two... There's only a two-day gap between the games, and obviously most of my players are going to be exhausted. Look at Eddie Johnson. I'm going to put in Arietta's, Arietta for him. Halsey looks to be fine, although... Oh, I switched to the kitchen. Well, Verde is going to start because Clouseau is tired. De Leon's going to take the bench, and I'm going to put in Porter, or Farfan. Or Rolf. That's for my goalkeeper. Will I be switching goalkeepers? Mm, I don't think so, but I'll be switching my backup. And Mina, I think I'm gonna switch Mina in as a, as a sub. And I think that should be good. You know, minor tweaks here and there. Obviously, I I don't I don't I'm not confident switching the whole team, just like I did against the New York team, because it's it's a zero zero game. You know, it's anyone's game at the moment, and frankly, I am a little nervous playing Toronto. I don't think I've had a good record against them this season. I think I've managed one win and maybe a draw or a draw and a loss, but it's not, it's not a record I'm confident with, and so I'm going to uh, put in as many starters as I can. But like I said, switching a couple players here, so I'm putting Arieta in, and I'm also putting Valverde, who in reality it's not it's not a drop-off, so technically I'm, I'm still pretty strong here, and, and I should be able to squeak out something. And Toronto see here, starting with their big guns. Even Gilberto's on the field. Look at that. Gilberto, Altador, Bradley, but no Giovinco. Huh. That's very odd. And here's my starting 11. It seems to me, it seems to be that Giovinco and Altador tend to have the same position, which I... But they hold the same position, at least according to this uh, uh, Toronto FC uh, AI, at least. Which is weird because I would assume Altidore is more of a, a target striker than Giovinco. Giovinco would be like a second forward. And so I, I feel that he should be up top. And right from the start, I get a PK call. This... Couldn't have gone any better, guys. Look, okay, there's some beef there with a the spindle. He didn't like that play. And I think he will he get a card or is it just a freak? It's just a PK. No, Justin Murrow gets the yellow card, so he's gonna have to play a little bit more cautious. I'm still not sure why that was called as a PK, but I'll take it. SPK might be what I need. I mean, like I said, guys, I only need one goal. One goal and I'll be in command. And Fabi's going to, even though he's been in the job, I'm confident he'll be able to score this. 
And he does. The goalkeeper goes on the other side. And there, Fabi is going to be playing his violin because I think I did the Gilardino celebration. What I really want to try is the palenka. Although, uh, truth be told, I don't want to use it now because this game is very important, and so I don't want to leave anything to chance. And Toronto FC get the ball here, and they're going to put it back in play. And show you to Jackson. Jackson passes it to Altador. Altador is going to pass it back to Jackson. Jackson's going to pass the ball into the center of the field, and Bradley with a nice goal. My lead just went away. It just evaporated. And look at those TST fans. They're extremely happy. Because <laughs> not only did they tie the game back, this is the first time they're in the playoffs. There was nothing Hamid could have done there. It was nicely placed by Bradley. And now the game's tied 1-1. With the aggregate being 1-1, but I'm winning because of away goals. And here we go with Fabio Spindola. Can I get the second? Arieta, Arieta. And it just misses. That was such a good opportunity to get up in the scoreboard. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to take the opportunity to the full advantage. And here we go, and it looks like Cheryu gets a yellow, so that's the second yellow for Toronto. And that was a well-deserved yellow. He went, he went right through Kitchen. Steve Birnbaum, who unfortunately is injured at the moment, which is sad to see because he and Bobby Boswell have made a nice pairing in the center of the back line. Hopefully, O'Pair will be able to manage uh, to be a nice substitution. And in the last game against uh, Orlando City FC, I thought that O'Pair was a little shaky at the beginning. But once the game uh, started, I guess, progressing, he started to get more settled into his position. And the nerves went away. Anyways, here we go with Fabi for the corner kick. Will this come up with a, something? No, it doesn't. And that is the end of the first half. And what a riveting first half it was with a 1-1 draw at the moment. And so far, this result benefits me. However, if they do manage to get one goal... That'll turn the tables on me, and I'm going to have to be chasing the game. Here we go. I think I'm keeping. I kept my same 11 uh, just in case because, uh, well, actually, I don't know why I kept my starting 11. We're not going to go to extra time. So, in theory, I just did something stupid. I didn't make any changes. I guess while I was playing, I figured that, you know, if the game if the game ends up the way it is, we'd go to overtime. But obviously because of the uh, away goal rule, it wouldn't go to overtime. Uh, anyways, here we go. There's only eight minutes left in the half, and so far the result's the same. And I'll be going into the finals. Ferry Kitchen gets the ball, passes it to Pontius. Pontius shoots, and it's just wide. It's just wide, and there's only five minutes left. Toronto are going to be pushing all these last five minutes of the game to get that game-winning goal. And Rolf passes it to a Spindle. Spindle, Arieta's alone. Arieta shoots, and a nice save there. A nice save there by number 18 for Toronto FC. And that, I'm pretty sure, would have clinched it had it not been for the emergency defending of that Toronto FC player.
and a nice center, a nice crossed ball, but Valverde can't get the ball on frame. And this will probably be the last play of the game. So if Toronto can play this quickly, they might be able to get one more opportunity to go to uh, get the goal that will get them to the next round. And we go Osorio. The youngster Osorio doesn't let go of the ball, and Bohamitz is going to hold on to the ball just a little longer and kill the game off. And that's the game. 1 1. DC United will be going to the finals, and my opponent will probably be uh, shown right after this. I'm not sure if I actually I'll show you guys who my opponent is after. But, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and make sure to tune in for the final which will be against Real Salt Lake, as I see here, against the LA Galaxy.